Hello everybody, I am Inkugaki and in this video today I will show you how to use each Life 2D tab, how to create our meshes and also how to make clip masks. Let's get started. Alright guys, here we are on Life 2D Cubism. This is the program that we're going to use to animate. First, we need to import our PSD file. To do it, we just need to find it in our computer and drag it down into the program. The program is going to ask us to select a display resolution. In this case, it's asking me to go for one quarter preview. We're going to hit OK and now the model is going to load. Once our model is loaded, we can actually check the resolution of the model. You guys can see here that it looks a little bit pixelated, but do not worry. When you export the model, it's going to export in full quality. But if you would like to work in a higher quality, you can actually go up here where it says show. Then we go down here where it says display quality and we can actually select a higher display, a half quality preview or a full scale. I would not recommend going full scale though. You need to take into account the capacity of your computer when it comes to processing. In my case, I'll go with a, a half preview. Once it's loaded, we can see that actually our model looks much better. All right, now let me show you each tab that we can see on Live 2D. To begin with, we have our parts tab. The parts tab is actually just like the layers that we had in our PSD file. That means that the parts tab conserves the layer hierarchy system of the PSD file. This is really important to take into account. And that's why it's always necessary to have a lot of organization before exporting your PSD file. Then we have our parameters tab. The parameters tab, it's where we're going to be animating all our VTuber model. Next, we have the tool details tab and the inspector tab. In the tool details tab, you're going to find the details of different tools so you can change them. For example, let's select um, the brush selection tool. Once we select it, you guys can see that the tool details tab changes. Now we can see width and brush size. Next, we have our inspector tab. In this tab, we can actually find information about the pieces that we are selecting. If I go to the parts tab, for example, I select the hair front, we're going to see that the name that it's going to appear in our inspector is going to be the name of the layer that we had or the part in this case then we have an id mesh we can change the name of the id whenever we want but for now we're going to leave them like that next we have the part this part it's going to tell us where does the hair front belongs for example in this case the hair front belongs to the part hair that will be this folder right here after that we have the deformer the deformer in this case says root because we don't have the formers yet. We have the clipping ID where we can clip different pieces into each other. Next we have the draw order that is basically a number that the program gives to the pieces so they can be assigned on top or behind each other. Curiously enough, every single piece that you import on Live 2D is going to be in the position 500, but you can change that if you want. Then we have the blending modes that says normal, additive and also multiply. And that will be it for the inspector tab for now. Next, we have our deformer tab. The deformer tab is really important and it's also really similar to the parts tab. It's really similar because it contains all the pieces as well as the parts tab, but two key differences. First difference is that we don't have folders. And the second big difference is that the deformer tab does not apply the layer hierarchy system that, that the parts tab have. Instead, we're going to apply a different kind of hierarchy in the deformer, a deformer hierarchy system. I'm going to show you that later. All right, now that I show you the parts that we're going to use, we can continue creating our art mesh. To begin with, I'm going to go to the parts tab and erase the background because we do not need it. Next, I'm going to lock the reference on the parts tab because I'm not going to need it for this step. And now we're going to select all the pieces of our model. You guys can do that by clicking and dragging this blue square right here. Or you can go to the root folder, right click, go to child object manipulation and select all. Once everything is selected, we're going to go to this button right here that says automatic mesh generator. When we click it, this window is going to appear where we can select a preset. We're going to have a standard preset. We can go for a deformation little or a deformation heavy. A little disclaimer here, my deformation heavy preset is actually different. I know you guys are going to have it because the program comes with this three, but by accident, I deleted my heavy preset. So I had to play with the settings to make something that I like. Once we have selected the preset that we want, we click X and our character is going to have now its own mesh. But that's not all. 
While everything is still selected, we're going to go back up and we're going to click the Edit Texture Atlas. Now, this new window is going to appear, and here we can select the width and the height of the Texture Atlas. Let me explain you what a Texture Atlas is first, okay? The Texture Atlas is going to be an image that the program is going to generate, where all the pieces of our character are going to be contained. So the program can retrieve the information of that image into the model. So, since all the pieces are going to be separated, I would recommend to make a big Texture Atlas. For now, I'll go with 8000 by 8000 pixels. It's better to have extra space rather than missing space, okay? So I'm going to hit OK, and we're going to see that we have now our Texture Atlas. Now, for some reason, even though I did not select the flat reference, the flat reference is here. But do not worry. If you don't want something in your Texture Atlas, you just select it and click Delete. And you guys can see that the flat reference is going to go in the list of unused objects. Now, you guys can actually move every single piece from here and there, right? And accommodate it how you like. But you can also go to Automatic Layout and the program is going to do it for you. Before we continue, guys, I'm going to tell you something really interesting because I know not everybody works on the same program when they are designing their VTuber model. Since I worked on Procreate, uh, Procreate has a little bit of a problem here. You guys can see that when I select an object, as small as it is, a red square is going to appear. This square is the size of the canvas, it's 3000 by 4000 pixels. This is a problem the only Procreate exports have. If you make your character in Clip Studio Paint or Krita or Photoshop, this red square is going to be the size of the object. Now so we're going to select and now we're going to click automatic layout. Here we can change the margins, the scale and allow rotations. So I'm going to make a margin of 5 pixels per piece and I'm going to click OK. Now the program is going to do it for us. But before we continue, I recommend you guys zooming in and checking that all the pieces are in fact well placed. Okay, we can see that for example, our eyelash is there, everything is here, but I can see that some pieces do not have a mesh and some others, the mesh didn't cover everything. So I'm going to explain you what is going to happen. Let me hit OK here. Alright, once our texture atlas is done, we can continue working. But first of all, you guys can see that my model is red. That's because the reference is not in the texture atlas and the program is telling us like, hey, you forgot this one. We're just going to put it down here and hide it because I don't need it right now. Now guys, remember when we saw in the texture atlas that some pieces did not have a mesh and some others had a mesh but they were not covering all the piece? Let me hide the hair. Now we are going to see that our eyebrows are going to be cut and we don't have a nose and we're missing an eyelash. This is actually a really common problem. That happens because the parts are maybe too small or too thin so when the program makes the automatic mesh generation it omits them so I'm going to show you how to fix them let's fix the eyebrow first so to fix this is actually really easy you guys are going to go up here where it says edit mesh manually and we're going to click this button then this new UI is going to appear and we actually can see that we can move the parts of our mesh. We're going to go to the tool details tab and we're going to find a new set of tools. This one is going to help us make more points. Look, I just made a little bit of an area where I know the eyelash goes. I'm going to move this a little bit more. We're going to go up here and confirm our mesh edit. And now the eyebrow appears, okay. We're going to go to the edit mesh manually again. Now that we can see our eyebrow, I recommend you guys to erase all of it and redo the mesh so it goes accordingly to the eyebrow. All right, that's going to do for now. As far as I can see, this part is also being cut. You guys can see that some parts are missing. But we also have some parts that are completely invisible. If you go to the face, nose, and you click nose or nose light, you guys can see that the part is still there, but it's not visible on the character. I'm going to go back, for example, to edit mesh manually, and I'm going to make a big mesh where the nose is, while selecting the part of the nose, of course. And then I'm going to apply it and leave it there. Nose is still not visible, do not worry. I'm going to do the same with the nose light, because I know that the nose light is somewhere over here as well. And I am also going to do that with one of the eyelashes that is missing. Eye squish line is not here either, so I'm going to do the eye squish line somewhere over here. Select OK, and the bottom eye line is not here either. So, once we have redone the meshes, now we can go back to the texture atlas and click it and look for the pieces that were missing, okay? 
I'm going to move pieces so just so I can see if some parts are clipping and since they are so small they do not look like they are clipping but ha huh, there we go okay <laughs> ah, i've done this so many times zoom in okay we guys can see that the belly for whatever reason was um covering our eyelash and our squish line now that we can see that our, our pieces are here we're going to rewrite the texture atlas by clicking ok all right now that we clicked OK, you guys can see that the pieces worked, right? Now we can see the bottom eye line, the eye shadow, the eyelash, but for some reason we have the nose and the nose light twice. I'm going to explain why. It's, it's pretty funny that this happened. Okay, let's go with the nose light and I'm going to go back to the edit mesh manually and I'm going to re-edit the mesh manually. You guys can see that my mesh is so big that in the texture atlas I also catch the nose. So, to further explain why I'm doing this, to further explain what a mesh is, right? Because everybody's like, oh, you have to do a mesh, you have to... What is a mesh? A mesh is basically a piece of cutout that is going to represent a little piece of our texture atlas. So, if we transform the mesh that contains an object, we are not transforming the object. We are transforming the visualization of the object that is in the texture atlas. Some sort of inception or something like that. Now I'm going to go to the nose and I'm going to do the same. I'm going to lower here, here as well, and here. And now we have our nose and our light. All right, guys, now you know how to make our meshes and also how to fix these kind of problems because, yeah, they can be annoying when you don't know why they are happening. Next, what I'm going to show you is how to make clipping masks. It's actually really easy. We're going to go to the inspector tab and we're going to select the part that we want to clip. In this case, I'll go with the eye shadow. So you're going to ask yourself, where do you want to clip this object? In my case, I want to clip this object in the sclera. So what I'm going to do is that in the inspector tab, now I have the information of the sclera and I'm going to select the ID sclera. I'll copy it and I'll go back to eye shadow and where it says clipping ID, I'll paste it. You're going to have a notice regarding clipping masks and we hit OK. And now the eye shadow is contained. We're going to do the same thing with the iris since we need the iris to be contained inside the sclera. And once we hit enter, now our eyes is going to be contained in the sclera. Before we finish, I'm going to do the same with the mouth. To show you guys, I'm going to hide the upper lip and the lower lip. We're gonna have the teeth and the tongue. So I'm going to select the mouth go to clip ID mouth because I want the teeth and the tongue to be inside the mouth and I'm going to select the teeth and the clipping ID I'm gonna paste the ID of mouth I'm going to do the same thing with the tongue and now the tongue is inside so that was it that's how you clip objects in Live 2D how to make art meshes and texture atlases and also how to troubleshoot those kind of annoying problems when a piece is missing all right, that's all for today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you learned something in this video. And if you did, please hit the like button. In the next video, we're actually going to learn how to animate the X, Y, and Z parameters on the head. So until then, stay tuned, guys. See you later.